I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. So, um, thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to have a motion to welcome the meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, I'll call the roll. Um, Eric Ashton. I'm here. Tim Bezetanko. Uh, um, Ann Brennan. Here. Roger Carroll here. Claire Sabella. Here. Ali D'Angelo. Here. Joanne Pickle. Here. And welcome to us from City Council. Um, Are there extra Oh, you know what? Oh, they're right here. I didn't pass them out. I kept them right here. My, my, my fault. Give them to yourself. <laughs> um, while we're doing that, we don't have the minutes for December, so we'll pass on that till next meeting. Um, we do have a new member. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar or know our new member. So Eric Gaffney was appointed and I guess effective in December. But um, welcome, Eric. I don't know if you want to briefly just give us a little. Oh, sure. For those you, of us who may not know you. Do you mind turning that on, Eric? I don't mind. Thank you. Pretty good at it now. <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah. Um, so, yes, my name is Eric Acton, and uh, I, uh, she's a lifelong resident. I uh, went to schools here first, and my children did. Um, and uh, I'm a teacher uh, here in Bexley. For many years, um, I've retired twice. Um, <laughs> I just started back yesterday at Cassian Elementary as an intervention specialist because they needed someone to finish out the semester. So here we go. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I, I, I mean, I've known Mike since he's a kid, so uh, I just really like being around him. And he's always <laughs> talking. I do. He's really positive. Uh, always has been. And Natalie. Got to know Natalie in the last 10 years or 12 years now, working because I, I showed them cross country uh, practice at the mansion every day. I've done that for 35 years or so. So um, it's just in my wheelhouse to be involved with this. I, I love uh, the parks, I love the recreation aspect. Um, and I I worked uh, with Ms. Brennan's husband. He hired me many, many, many years ago um, mm -hmm. when he was running that whole. To mansion and everything by himself at first and then with an assistant so that was a long time ago we go up to the third floor where you all are housed now it was just a dusty dirty old place and he has people burn up sets of like balls and play, uh, uh bats and and everything and get it going so um, i just really so excited to do this it's a great way to start the new year and um i'm, I'm real happy to do this well, we're really happy to have you aboard. We're really grateful that you've agreed to um, accept the mayor's invitation and uh, to serve on the rent board. And we're eager to be here with you. I don't know if anyone just wants to briefly introduce themselves to Eric. Uh, I don't know how you know everybody here or not. So. Kind of not really faces, yes, but I don't. Okay. Allie, you want to start? Sure. I'm Allie D'Angelo. Uh, been on the board for not very long, year ish, maybe. Um, so, which man, recreation and all forms, uh, and all the programs that my team is team. Phenomenal. Just if I sign up today, tested <laughs> <laughs> up and had time to leave. So. Um, and we, uh, my husband and son, and I lived in Bexley for about six years, and we live in Central. Um, you know, it's a fourth grader at Castle. <laughs> well, you know the end. I'm Claire Smiles. Um, I have a sixth grade son who sadly did not get to this teacher in college. And um, I fourth grade daughter. And I've been on the right board. Has it been a year? Two years? Maybe two. I think it's been at least two. It's been so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, What's your daughter? Fiona. She goes to CSG. She goes to CSG. Oh, yes. what a cast. I wouldn't run into. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Joanne Pickrell. I'm on the school board. Um, I've been here for about 15 years. My husband and I have two little girls over at Maryland. I did my registration today and I double blocked by X. Yeah. All right. We have to call it's Emily Schultz. Better than Emily Schultz. We're here at the same time and keep up too. Four track. I really want to see the right now. Seven. <laughs> I've been on board for about a year at Coincide to the town school. Yeah, I think I, I sit with you at the graduation. graduation. Yeah. 
And Eric and I have known each other for a long time, back in the days when we both could play basketball, yeah. which is many, many years <laughs> That's ago. That's how we met. Yeah, when played with Eric and all the teachers somehow got on, yeah. that, on that team. And uh, Eric had this great gift that he could run and run and run and never get tired and never sweat. And it's like, uh, <laughs> I, the John I couldn't drink a little shoe. So I just gave the bottle of Perfect. So we're really happy to have you on board. So thank you for being to do this. Great. I would also throw out, uh, you know, I'm obviously excited to work with Eric. It's, um, for those that may not know, uh, Eric and his leadership with the cross country team and their student athletes have been an integral part of the success of the youth triathlon mm -hmm. since its inception. Um, every year we go to them and ask for volunteers and it takes it's 70, 80. 80 volunteers to make that event work. And uh, the, the cross country teams, both the, the men's and women's cross country teams always come up big and provide a great deal of support for that event. So we appreciate that every year, the support that they give and the leadership that you provide there. So thank you. Um, we good with the alcohol policy recommendations? Yeah. All right. So um, we had this discussion, some of this discussion last week as part of the mansion rental um, annual report. Um, and we wanted to sort of sit on it for a month. I did reach out to uh, one of the neighbors, just to make sure that they were aware of the community of, of the discussion that the board has had. Um, technically, um, uh, by the alcohol framework uh, legislation, we will have to provide written notice when council um, takes up any potential changes to the alcohol framework. But uh, in the in the effort to to be as transparent as possible, especially with the residents that we knew were maybe more um, interested in, in what was going on with this framework and uh, we're involved in the development of this framework and we'll be more more interested in uh, any changes we want to make sure they had you know some even advanced notice from what they will formally get hopefully in the next month or so um, did not receive any response on it um, so I you know uh, not surprised that we don't have anyone here speaking on it in this forum we may may or may not have it if it if when it comes in front of council um a little bit of, again a back so we some of this stuff we discussed in uh, november of 21 and the board at that time actually made some recommendations of uh potential changes uh to some of these in 21 we did not move forward with bringing those to council for various reasons mm -hmm. um but i do think um depending on what the board this decides here today i think it and have been talked with the mayor he agrees that it probably will be something that we will bring uh forward any of these changes as soon as possible, probably to, to counsel to start the ball rolling on that. Uh, so just just a little bit of background on that. So with that said, um, everyone should have in front of them. And now, if you don't mind pulling up the alcohol framework, uh, so this is a marked up copy of um, the alcohol framework, which was revised in uh, 2019, 20 March 26, 2019, um, uh, and that was revised as part of the addition of the. Um, uh, of the carriage court space. So we, we needed to account for the new space. So that's why this was about revised in 2019. Um, uh, what we're going to be talking about is, is more specific to carriage court impact. Um, uh, obviously, we have had two years of experience now, roughly two years of experience with rentals, uh, as, as Lauren uh, presented um, last meeting. We've had two years of experience of rentals in the carriage court space um and we've, we've gained a lot of experience a lot of knowledge a lot of understanding about um how that space works uh what sort of adjustments we might need what the potential impact or what the, the, the heat impact has been um on the neighborhood on the building on the facility on the programming uh and it, it, it seems to make sense as we did in 2008 when we introduced alcohol to jeffrey mansion because prior to that it wasn't allowed at all we sort of dipped our toe in it at that point, uh, put a lot of restrictions on it, sort of evaluated how it went and sort of adjusted based on the information we got and it expanded uh, or reduced some of the limitations. Um, I think in a thoughtful way that allowed us to feel pretty good about um, it being a safe situation, about it um, having limited impact on the neighborhood and, and also limited impact on our other missions within the department. Um, so with that said, uh, the the first uh, first bit I'll talk about all this. I should probably do it in the order. Um, so what we've done is we've taken the different sections that we talked about. Um, uh, per Roger's suggestion, I've put together resolutions for each one of them that will allow board members to uh, vote based on the specific item as opposed to as a whole. Uh, so in, just in case somebody is 
for one piece of it and not necessarily for another piece of it. It allows for a little more flexibility in terms of the way the vote would happen. Um, uh, the first one is going to be resolution 0123, um, which is uh, an exemption to the end time for alcohol events on holidays. Now, this isn't something we talked about last uh, meeting, but it's not, it's sort of a small item. It is something that you all passed in November of 2021. So I just want to bring it back up. Uh, essentially, um, uh, the background on this is the alcohol framework uh, limits the hours for events on Monday through Thursday that any event would end at, has to end at 11 o'clock. And on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it has to end at 11.30. Uh, just a reminder, any event during the weekday has to have uh, approval by myself and the mayor specifically. And that's in an effort to protect programming and make sure programming comes first in the building and rentals are a uh, are important, but are happening in a specific silo within our operation. Um, uh, you know, from a from an event standpoint, obviously uh, New Year's Eve would be an event that people might want to rent the facility. And if we said you have to be out of there by eleven thirty, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Probably, um, you can also imagine a weekday event. Um, and that might be a holiday uh, that maybe wants to go past 11 o'clock, um, given that maybe there's no work or no school or whatever the next day. Um, this would provide just a little bit of flexibility for us to be allowed to do that. I don't think there'd be a lot of examples, but there would be a handful of examples that might make sense. So um, the first one allows for an exemption for holidays. Um, and you'll see, I think there's language in here. Hello, you know, Hold up the resolution. I'm at the resolution again. Uh, which one is Framework. that? Yeah. yeah. Oh. You want me to pull up the actually? Why that? is it not on there? I don't know. Is that not the right? Well, would there be any end time for the 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 events on the holidays? It's a great question. It's not written with any end time. Oh, there it is, There's, Mike. Sorry. Um, it's not written with any end time. We could. <laughs> think of what our we could I guess make an arbitrary one o'clock one a.m. if we wanted to put something in there. Yeah. I think we would. I think intuitively we would probably not allow it to go on uh, all night. But uh, the way it's written, it doesn't necessarily have an end time. So we can add a if we feel like a need, there's a need to add a. It very hard like a lock-in, you know, like high school lock-ins. You know, it's a great point because uh, uh, we have the uh, graduation party, which does go. To like three in the morning. Two, two maybe. Two. Uh, no, it, that would. Uh, there's exemptions in here for community senior party. Senior party. Like, so yeah, yeah maybe not for graduation. And that doesn't necessarily happen all the way. Um, um, but yeah, that would be an example of an event that goes a little bit later. That's the only one. Um, so if there's if there's a reason to say hey, holidays are exempt uh, or holidays. Um, we're going to have an end time of one o'clock. We can yeah. change the language. That makes everyone feel more comfortable about it. Thoughts? Big thoughts. Do we have any feedback? Do we have any feedback from entities that would have liked to go longer? How long they want to go? We, we've had examples of people that have asked about renting it around 4th of July, I mean, around New Year's Eve, yeah. where we it's sort of a non-starter once we say there's 1130 time yeah. right stop so i like i said i don't think this is going to have a huge impact yeah yeah um you can make an argument um uh, memorial weekend labor day weekend on a sunday that somebody is doing a wedding now maybe th theoretically go longer i'm not sure generally speaking we would probably approve that because it's not sort of uh, significant to the event in order for it to be successful, right? The idea that it has to go, that would be, that to me would be a taking advantage of the rule as opposed to the rule being in place to serve a certain situation. Um, Can we just say something like exempt from the designated end time and to be negotiated on a case by case basis? Or leave it blank and we'll just do right. that. Or, or yeah. if you feel like we want to have more control over, we can put a hard end time in there if we feel like that's necessary. Um, one of the things I will say, generally speaking, that we're trying to do as we experience this framework over the last couple of years is try to make things a little more 
Today's not the right word, but give us a little more flexibility so that we're not like, well, when this issue comes up, we can't do anything about it without going through this whole process to make some of these changes. Um, so that would be the only sort of maybe reason to keep it a little more vague. But so you feel comfortable like saying holidays are exempt that we give you flexibility to say no, we're not gonna let you go to school or not. Yes. So you guys would feel that you could do that without any problem. Yes. Okay. Unless it was your party. <laughs> and what I mean. <laughs> Mike, is that our max occupancy is 128? No, that's that's the um, that's the the former max occupancy of the old space. What are we at to be able to? How many people can we? The new space 175 is what we promote. We can with the in interiors. Well, how many people can you get in there? 175 just a One carriage house with upstairs. No. Well, I, we max out at 175. They can have the upstairs space, but it's usually with the idea that it's moving the party from the upstairs space to the lower so space. So 175 so, max. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what we promote. If somebody's like, "Look, I need to," we got our list down to 182. You know, we mm -hmm. can we can make it work. There's nothing. There's no hard line prohibiting it, other than it starts to get crowded and it's an experience issue for for the event. So we don't want to say. You can do 200, even if we might be able to squeeze 200 and have it be a bad experience for them. So, uh, any more comments or discussion on the holidays or exempt from the designated income? You want to pull up the rest? Do you want to do these all at the end? Uh, uh, we can do it one by one. Or okay. what, would you, to... what would you guys think would be better? Do it one by one or sort of after we're done, go back and do it? Uh... In terms of approving the individual? Each one, I think, just to sort of get a sense that, I don't know, it's, in some sense, it makes sense to still want yeah. to address them. Okay. okay. So this is what the resolution uh, would, what we would be asking for a vote on in terms of the resolution. Um, amend, uh, recommend changes to the Jeffrey Mansion alcohol framework, which is the original ordinance was 3712, creating an exemption to the end times for alcohol events on holidays. Talks of the whereas is sort of explain uh, why, what the, the thought process is in terms of Creating this exemption, and then um, section one uh, sort of delineates exactly what the what the change would be. Which would recommend the rec board recommends that the Jeffrey Mansion Alcohol Framework is amended to make holidays exempt from rental end times. Um, the exact language would be what would be in front of um, city council, and it presumably would be what is on this markup. But it effectively allows for an exemption for holidays. Do you need a motion for us to approve this? Resolution. Second. Um, all in favor? Are there any discussion before we? All in favor say aye. 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 Um, opposed? So unanimous from the table here. All right. Resolution 0223 um, is to um, uh, remove the restriction for alcohol events uh, that restricts it to resident only. Um, we've had discussions on that. Obviously, that's a very limiting restriction on the facility. And this is, again, specific to the carriage court and it's specific to alcohol. Non residents can book the carriage court with non alcohol currently. They can book the uh, Jeffrey House, the original space, for out with alcohol or without alcohol. But as it relates to the carriage court, alcohol events, it's limited to resident only. Um, obviously, again, very limiting factor on our ability to book the facility when it's limited to Bexley residents, um, as opposed to you know greater Columbus area that may have an interest in the facility. Um, uh, the whereas is in the resolution uh, again talks about some of the the background um, um, uh, rentals. Uh, uh, Lauren estimated over the two years we've had roughly. Um, not just me. We've had rough, just over 50 events in the carriage court space. Uh, we've not had a single reported incident in those 50 uh, events. Um, rental capacity at the, at the car carriage court has not been met, and therefore concerns about limited access to carriage court for Bexley residents have not been issued. So that's something else. So there's two issues that we're thinking about. One is um, uh, in terms of this this being in place. One is uh, about um, the impact of these events on the space. You know, having residents that have uh, that's you know this is a part of their community, um, making sure that they have access to this space. Um, you know, by opening it up to non-residents, do we run the risk of preventing or, or limiting the access to our residents? Um, 
and we have not used all of our allotted rentals uh, for our residents. So we are currently, it's not a capacity issue for our community. So it doesn't, we don't expect it will affect that. Additionally, we'll have policies in place that still give um, priority to uh, residents for rentals um, before non-residents. Um, so that that issue is, so two issues today, we haven't had it, we haven't had problems in the space. Um, since you've been using it for two years, and uh, we have we don't have a capacity issue for our residents. So, so based on those, uh, and in an effort to expand our uh, potential bookings and revenue for the city for the department, uh, it makes sense to us uh, to eliminate that restriction. Again, it's a similar process we followed with the original Jeffrey Mansion space in 2008 with alcohol. I think it was limited to residents only. Uh, had some experience with that, and then opened it up, and this this follows that same sort of template. Um, has there been any um, keeping track of how many non-residents have contacted uh, to rent the space and then you can pull we can't do that? Yeah, um, Lauren had mentioned it's like 33. Uh, 33. Um, it's tough to say whether they would have ultimately booked it, um, but when you say you can, uh, she said it about 33 times she's had to turn um, non-residents away based on this limitation. Uh, I will also say, and I think she mentioned this at uh, uh, when giving the report at the last meeting, uh, she also estimated about half of our rentals, which are done by Mexican residents, are on behalf of non-residents. Um, now, they may be family members that live outside of Bexley, or they obviously have close ties, but uh, the person may be getting married or having a graduation party or whatever else who's not necessarily a resident. And so, um, you know, it has, you know, we've got experience with we have experience with non resident running space, it's just it's not an issue, so it uh, doesn't make sense necessarily to keep that limitation in place. Any questions, comments, concerns? Yeah, so, yeah, that, yeah, that's it. Um, so. Ultimately, section one, the Bexley Recreation Board recommends that the Jeffrey Mansion alcohol framework removes the Bexley resident requirement to carriage court, carriage court alcohol event rentals at Jeffrey Mansion. That resolution. Second. Second. Any comments, discussion? Um, all, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, so unanimously uh, approved by the members here today. Great, thank you. All right, resolution 0323. Uh, uh, this resolution is to remove uh, the limitation on the number of monthly uh, carriage court alcohol event rentals at Jeffrey Mansion. Currently, the alcohol framework limits it to two a month. We've had discussion about a lot of way, maybe ways to uh, address that, talking about maybe making it 24 a year and not limited to two a month. But again, uh, rentals are somewhat seasonal, especially with weddings. And so you have a, a really dense time in the fall and uh, summer, uh, less so in the winter. Um, we've ultimately are making the recommendation, but obviously we, we're happy to discuss or, or make any changes, but making the recommendation to go forward to council with eliminating the numbers restrictions altogether. Um, and uh, again, I, I will say, um, obviously we can always internally restricted if we feel the need to for whatever reason. Um, but this gives us flexibility to go uh, different directions with it. Um, again, some of the whereas is that I talk about in here for this, um, again, over 50 events over the last two years, again, not a single reported issue um, for any carriage court events. We had during that time period, I think one call of concern about amplified music happening outside, which was against policy. It was a it was an enforcement issue and not a policy issue. And it was involving the Jeffrey House, not the carriage court space. Um, but we've uh, you know, generally had a really good record in terms of impact on the neighborhood um, and, and limiting that. Um, again, we, we estimated, uh, we've turned away about 33 um, bookings. Um, uh, for the resident uh, requirement, um, but we do believe you know, there's there is significant potential loss for revenue and bookings and access uh, based on this restriction, and we don't see the negative impact of, of making the change. So, 
Um, that's the sort of the rationale for recommending that change at this point. Any comments or questions from anybody? That resolution. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor of um, this is resolution 03 23. Uh, yes. Um, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimously yeah. approved by board members for today. All right. And last but not least is 04 23. Modifying security language from police officer to security staff and providing flexibility for Bexley Recreation and Park staff in determining which events need security staff present. Um, again, same some of the same language in the whereas, the number of events we've had, not, not had any issues. Um, it has, and we talked about it, it has become more and more difficult to secure Bexley police officers for all events. Uh, the impact of that is what happens currently, uh, it then gets kicked to the county. And county has um, a standing policy that for any any uh, uh, staff that goes out for these types of things, it's a two person minimum. Um, so we might have a we might have a uh, wedding shower uh, with family and twenty five people, and they want to have a champagne toast, and they are going to have to spend roughly sixty bucks each on two officers per hour in order to have champagne at their event. And it just doesn't uh, give us a lot of flexibility in terms of providing security and give us options. Uh, and also creates sort of a, a, a pretty um, significant cost uh, for the end users uh, given some of the limited flexibility. Um, so two, two parts of this is we'd like to have flexibility about what constitutes security, right? It gives us a different option to look at private security forces to be able to fill that role. But the other bit of it is to give us uh, our staff, and that would generally fall on Lauren, but uh, to give our staff the ability to apply some common sense to the type of event that's going on and as to whether or not it really would require security in any way, shape, or form. Obviously, we'll have staff there. We have our preferred caterers there who are an agent of the city. We have our, our maintenance staff that would be there. Um, but you know, there's, there's a lot of events that have, uh, frankly, have decided not to move forward because of security costs based on uh, the type of event that they're having, in which it's not an open bar, it's not a ton of alcohol consumption, it's a wine tasting, it's a champagne toast, it's some of the, the, the smaller events, family gatherings, um, in which it just doesn't make a lot of sense. But we don't have any flexibility. If there's alcohol, we have to follow the alcohol framework and the and and require that. Um, so that's the 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 genesis for this um, discussion. I will say, uh, for what it's worth. Our intent uh, operationally would be for events that we want to have security would be to start with Bexley police officers, even though we might have the ability to go with a private security force first. Our intent would be to move forward with Bexley police officers, but this does give us the flexibility. If we can't find a Bexley police officer, they can't get one to cover it, uh, that we could, you know, uh, contract with a security team and, and, and get security that one. So it's a flexibility issue for us. Uh, I, I think obviously. Safety is priority for us, uh, regardless of what the framework says or doesn't say. So we will still always want to err on the side of making sure we're providing a safe environment. But there's some common sense we want to be able to apply in some situations. So for this one, I, I think it's not probably going to be in the resolution, right? But finding some back of this document, this would be. I think we need to emphasize those taking that the entity renting the space needs to pay for these. Officers. That was cut out the second part, or you change that too? We want to have flexibility in that because we might roll it into the cost and we and we take care of it, especially if we go through a, a private security force. Um, we think that that might prevent some other issues that have happened where yeah. they're they're supposed to remember to bring a check to the event to pay the officer that's there, and it just causes some other sort of operational issues. So for that reason, I, I, I would like to keep it out so that if we decide we want to take it on and, and just roll it into our costs and yeah it, it allows us to go. I have a similar question. So so you you're, you're, that that's the avenue you're gonna pursue. So so the so the rent rent team won't have to choose from a preferred list of security folks. No you guys will you guys will already contract with whoever needs best 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And now we might pass that cost along to the end users. It might either be rolled into our rental fee or it might actually be a separate fee that we add on to it, but they're gonna pay us and then we will pay the contractor or the police department. We've got to, we got to work through some logistics on that. There's some auditing issues with, you know, paying the officers through the city and how that works. But um, yeah, that would be the intent. Has there has there been an incident where the um during an event the exit police, not anyone on security, would have to be called for any reason? Uh, we've I, I'm aware of one incident where we had a backseat police officer. Um, this was before the carriage court. It was in the Jeffrey House, where I don't remember the exact specifics, uh, but where the officer on duty had to address concerns about over I, I, was over serving. Um, but they never had a call like you know the regular police department no, to come and help them. No. But that you know, for whatever it's worth, you know, we'll work through a process with a private security force about steps that we would want them to take, and that's that's the other bit of it, which is you know they can just as easily call our police department, have somebody there in three minutes if something were to actually get sideways. Um, so you know, we obviously have great response time from our police officers. And so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of layers for security that we have in place. Okay. Any other comments or discussion on this? I'd like to ask about um, how you, you you spoke earlier about the opportunity for uh, police officers to to participate. Would, would, would that be? Is that kind of did you weave that into that so that every single time you start with our police force? So currently, the way the policy is, we do start with our police force. Mm -hmm. This would give us, this arguably would give us flexibility to go with a private firm or our Bexley Police Force in whatever order we decided. Our intent would be to start with our Bexley Police Force. That would be our intent, it would be to go to them first. Um, uh, at this point in time, that would be our intent. And then if they couldn't get it covered, then we would move on to a security, form, uh, a security force. I can imagine situations in which uh, because we were talking also about having flexibility about whether we need security at all, where we're like, yeah, it may be good to have a, some security here, but uh, the private force presumably would be a lot less expensive and it might make sense for, I'm, I'm going to give a bad example, but, uh, you know, a high school graduation party where the parents want to be able to have alcohol and they might want to have some beers and we're like, you know what, we just, <laughs> given that we have minors here and it's really for a minor event, we want to have some security here and but we don't want to pass along that. I think our, I think it's 60, 62, now. 62 now per individual officer for the city, uh, for a private police force or, or private security would be probably around 30 an hour. Um, so is it, I mean, okay. So I'm asking that because I don't know if the cost really matters that much if it's going to be rolled into the price anyway, having those connections, you, you have a personal relationship, I'm sure yeah. with a lot of the officers. Um, and I think about emergencies too, even if someone had a cardiac arrest or mm -hmm. someone falls or those sorts of things, um, they, there's things might move quicker. Yeah. I'm not sure. And I wonder if the cost difference is that much. Uh, it sounds to me like you've had a lot of success uh, with the police force. Um, and I just wonder that isn't written in that it's, that's always the starting point. Like you run it by them, but yeah, with only if and when you're saying that it's okay, so it's gonna be a nighttime, it's gonna be 175 people, it's gonna be alcohol, I'm not sure. It's you want something that knows the way of the land, right? Is that, I mean, yeah, I guess that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think what you're asking is whether you want it codified and written in that we start with the Bexley police officer, is probably what you're asking, and that's fine. I mean, I think that would be our intent. It's not written in a way that requires us to do that, but that would be our intent because I agree with you. I think having officers that know our community, know the building, uh, know the people there oftentimes, not necessarily always, uh, yeah. is better service from a security standpoint. And it, 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 you know, it helps ensure a better outcome in the event that there's an issue, uh, which is why we would, which is why that's the direction we would generally go. Uh, I would expect us to go. Yeah. Um, if we feel like it needs to be written that way, I, I'm I'm fine with that as long as we have the flexibility to still decide whether we even need an officer or security at all. Sure. And if we do, that we can go with them. And then if we don't have, 
if they can't get it covered, then you know they can communicate. We can go to private force as opposed to going to the county where uh, they don't have any more institutional knowledge of our facility or of our residents and don't have that personal connection any more than a private security force would. Yeah. I mean, I just worked yeah. with, like that safety bit again, where where there are a lot of folks that could walk in with those parties right, that don't belong there, shouldn't yeah. be there, um, or there's a disagreement about music how about it in, or yeah you know or someone you know has a few drinks and goes down to the playground i don't know like i'm trying to you're I'm, thinking of all of it right yeah i'm just thinking like experience to, to cut that off and i know that a lot of the officers are stakeholders um too right as you're seeing, sharing on and i don't know how necessary but i i think about that and just their presence probably would deter right any curiosities or mm -hmm. maybe I, yeah, I mean, I, like I said, because that was our intent would be to go to Bexley Police yeah. first. I'm fine if we write it that way, you know, have it written that, that that's our first effort when we decide we need security to, to go to police officers and only move to private security if they can't get it covered. I'm, I'm, I'm fine if we feel like that is important. Um, again, because that was that would be our intent. Operation. That, that's like not that. really actually, you know, you do that. It's not the part now, is it, to go to Bexley first? It is actually, uh, especially yeah. the officer must be hired by going through the Bexley Police Department. Okay. Is that one of the sections that's struck out? Uh, and then they are the ones that actually coordinate with the county if they can't get it covered. Okay. So, you want to make the change that Eric's suggesting or put that change back into the resolution? Uh, yeah, yes, we can. Um, what does that do to private security? To me, it would allow us. Uh, you could leave the language that just says we have to have security staff. We can add a line that says uh, our first um, attempt to secure security staff will be through the Bexley yeah. Police Department. And just, yeah. yeah. You could have a section two and between one and two, and then say, um, Bexley police officers will be the first, or you say first right of refusal. Or, um, That's what it would that or trying to accomplish. Or uh, we will reach, or the Recreation Department will reach out to the, the Mexico Police Department for, uh, in an effort to get officers, reach out to Mexico Police Department first in an effort to get officers for security purposes. Added to the sentence, the second sentence, the ERP staff reserve the right to. Um, Give first, uh, give, reserve the right to first uh, um, well, ask or request uh, police, especially police department, um, especially police officer. Um, no, that wouldn't work out. I was trying to combine the two so that you can get it on that one next. You have what you struck yes, out was uh, special duty officers must be hired by going through the Bexley Police Department. You could you could say special duty officers uh, must first be offered or must first be hired by offering through the that needs to offer the police department first. Yeah. I think if I think if you um or adding that as the first right of refusal, I think you do need to have section one, section two, section three. Yeah. So it's just Clear. I think your original language that you said does the job. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, the simple. Uh huh. Yeah. So, um, so security coverage. Right of refusal. First. Security coverage will be offered to Mexican police officers who are first right of refusal. Yeah, priority for security coverage will be offered. Will be given to Bexley Police Officers. 
What was that? Sure. Start out with that. You say Priority. again. Priority for security coverage given to best. Police officers department. I think you said officers. I think it would serve its purpose. It's not what I meant to say. Priority comes back. Yeah. 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 First. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah, yeah I don't like the first off. Yeah, the last. Oh. Yeah. Is that yeah. it? Um, what's, the, what's, the, what's the number of the resolution? Well, 0423. I, I saw resolution 0423. Is, is, is that all the discussion I should? I don't know if anyone had any more comments or thoughts about this before we go to the vote. Like Everybody okay with this? Sorry. Okay. That's amazing. Okay. Um, go ahead. Again. So I, I saw uh, resolution 0423 as amended. Second. Second. Um, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? You're not. So it's unanimously approved by the board president. Thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate so, uh, the process. Violence. Process we will work on getting uh, public notice out and getting it onto city council's agenda. I, I, we have to give 30 days public, we have to give 30 days written notice prior to. It's first read, I believe, is the way it's written. It's Staying here no later than seven days seven, so after later. intro. And that, I had a question on that, Mike. Okay. I wanted to ask the rec board. So at Jeffrey Mansion, like when we're in certain parts of Bexley, 500 feet is extends across a lot more homes. Yeah. But at Jeffrey Mansion, it's going to be the center of the creek. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, trying to understand. Are we reaching the right we'll, people? We'll do. Uh, my uh, my plan that? is to do 500 from the property edge. The edge. Yeah. So all the way around the property edge. So it's it like would reach more seven. than probably would normally be impacted by. I think it would reach more than. How many residents does that hit? I don't. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I know. I've just been I, here I, so many if times. I remember zoning, correctly, but I want to. Is it zoning? <laughs> am I wrong? Is zoning? 300 or yeah. is it, it's 300 feet it is yeah however there's been yeah. circumstances where that's been extended based on um how that is felt yeah. like it's mm -hmm. um affecting community members so i just wanted to that's something that kind of came up to me making sure i just i feel like we always do better if it gets out there and people are notified so then they're aware and whether they like it or not it's not a surprise. Well, I think yeah. we I think it would be completely appropriate to have it be notified and through you know the blast and through other ways, but that's different than a specific written notification to individual households, which Absolutely. is what this is covering. Mm -hmm. Um and I think I could be wrong, but I think 500 was the number that was picked and felt pretty good about what it, it covered relative to the adjacent properties to the uh, to Jeffrey Park. Not just the building, right? We wouldn't use the building as 500 feet. Um, we could go further. I just I don't know. Then what is the number? Is it 600? Is it 700? Is it a thousand? You know, yeah. is it a thousand? And obviously, there's costs associated with that. Uh, there's time associated with that. And it, in many cases, it may be reaching a, a group that doesn't feel like they are specifically impacted. They might have an opinion on it, but are specifically impacted by right. the policy change. So I just asked that as a question. Yeah. Is that just for people to consider because as a council member I'll be hearing about yeah. it. So I want to make I mean, sure I guess what I would what I would have encourage, a recommendation. What I maybe encourage would encourage you to do is if, yeah. if you felt like that's not enough, mm -hmm. maybe it doesn't impact this this effort, but maybe you we make a you make a you know a motion to amend this to go to 600 or 700 okay. or whatever you think maybe if you feel like 500 is not reaching the net that we need to reach okay then we can adjust this but and this comes out from the city like everything else correct the letter will come from city hall um it might it might okay. be on with recreation letterhead as yeah. opposed to city letterhead but yeah, yeah. you know and i might ask kathy rose if she feels like 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. She would have. She does more of this than anyone. Yeah, right. We don't. We don't do it a lot. So, so. I'll, I'll take a recommendation from her if everybody feels comfortable with that. Yeah. Absolutely. And Mike, I had a question along those lines. The the folks that that I think that you contacted, did you email them with the copy it, it was of it? With uh, the copy of the it, it wasn't a copy of the proposal, which frankly wasn't even done at the time. Okay. Uh, but it was the it was the points that we talked about in the in the rationale behind it. So it was a fairly extensive email. It was it, it really was one adjacent neighbor who's been more involved in this process than anyone so else. The, 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 um, yes. The okay. I yeah. just uh, the other property is in the process of selling or has sold, you know, so we don't even have a, another neighbor at the property just north of the driveway yet. Although I think we have an idea who it's going to be. I don't think we actually have. Uh, they haven't moved in. Um, but we're going to reach out to them because it sounds like that that individual is in the restaurant business, so maybe they want to be able to put it. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Um, okay. Uh, director's report. All right. Um, I want to update the, the board. Uh, we had our second ever Bar Jeans Trip and Volunteer of the Year uh, uh, recipient. Uh, that was uh, presented at the last council meeting. Um, uh, we started this last year in honor of Barb James Triffin, who the award is named after, and Patrick Baum, who is a lifelong resident actually, um, was selected uh, by our staff as the recipient for 2022. Um, Patrick is somebody who is volunteers uh, in basically every youth sport that we do, coaching his kids. Um, he has three boys. Um, uh, Jasper, Grady, and Satchel, and uh, of, of varying ages, and he coaches them in mm -hmm. basketball, flag football, baseball. Uh, he also coaches them in soccer through CISA. Uh, he just does a tremendous job of teaching the game. He, um, uh, he teaches the game. He makes it a fun environment. He, he focuses on, you know, on sportsmanship and positivity uh, and the experience, and you know, so we were excited to be able to honor his time and effort and energy that he's put in with our department with our community so congratulations to patrick um uh the ice rink opened for a day and a half <laughs> over yeah. winter break it was too bad that it was all right over christmas it was just hard to figure out any sort of staffing on christmas day or christmas eve or the federal holiday the day after but uh kudos to a couple things kudos to our maintenance staff for getting it up and running once we saw this cold snap that was going to last <laughs> and it was going to be negative temperatures we're like this is going to freeze in two days uh they worked really really hard to get the ice rink up we never had it open during the holiday break which was really cool uh who knows if we ever will again but it was it was really fun in that environment um and kudos to our parks that our our, mate, our rec staff who frankly worked around their schedules during the holidays to be able to help make sure this was staffed on um, what was supposed to be a, a department day off the day Tuesday after uh, Christmas, because that was not to get too far in the weeds. Uh, but um, in, in lieu of Columbus Day, the city now celebrates Sexy Day, which happens in August. But we do not take that day off as a department because it's the week of the youth triathlon and we can't afford to lose a day <laughs> and in preparation and camps in. And so we always moved it to the hol to the holidays. And we we said we'll just uh, as a department be closed on Tuesday after Christmas or Bexy Day. And then we saw this weather and we're like, well, uh, uh, we if we're gonna have any chance of having this open, we need to be open on that day we we're supposed to be closed. So we moved that day to Thursday because it was going to rain on Thursday and staff came in and, and did what they needed to do to make sure that our community had access to this. So uh, kudos to our, our, our rec staff as well for, for working their, their schedules around so that our, our community had the access. We had over two days. We had uh, on that Tuesday, we had basically a full schedule from 9.30 to 7. Uh, on that Wednesday, when it was starting to heat up, we only did it in the morning because by the afternoon, <laughs> ice wasn't in great condition. But we had 291 participants come through in a, you know, a day and a half. Um, and most time slots, we, we max out at 40. Most time slots were 30 to 40. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it was uh, it was really you know a cool thing to see. It's still up. It's now a small pool, uh, <laughs> a shallow pool, I should say. It's a pretty big pool. It's a shallow pool. Uh, and we're, we're keeping an eye on the 14-day forecast. Nothing, <laughs> <laughs> nothing looks 
great right now, but you know, uh, historically Maybe we've only had it open in late January and February. So yeah, it'll be back. It'll be back. Yes. It'll be back. Like, yes, we're prepared we're for hoping. freezes. Yeah. It's weather, we're opening back up. Weather we're, related. <laughs> we'll probably have to get in there. I'm gonna tell you more than you want to know about ice management. We'll probably have to get in there with some waders uh, before yeah. it freezes again to get the leaves out yeah. because when the leaves freeze in there, they heat up really quick and it melts it. Yeah. Um, so we have to try to get as much of the leaf, the leaves <laughs> out of there. It ruins the ice surface, which is interesting. We've learned a lot. Yes, we've learned a lot. Put packs in on hockey and just join. Just join the ice. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had we, we've had we had one potential break. Uh, oh, it was a big crack across. Are well, you talking no, about that? I mean, I mean oh, there's a big crack. <laughs> oh, break. Oh, break. My kids, that kind of break. Not, <laughs> not as agile on the on the skates as they might be on the soccer field. So, oh, they uh, broke a blade. No, no oh, wrist. Yeah. Oh, uh, we had a, oh, so what we do when we first open up is we try to have a um, uh, city staff like that's the first thing that oh, they all staff made a staff police staff or uh, uh, eligible to come over us? and we had a, she did. a family member who fell in first one but uh knock on wood this only been twice now that in the three years that we've had which is if you know anything about ice skating or roller skating it's, we take our kids roller skating in camp We've stopped doing that, yeah. but it's almost every year. That's the reason. It's just like one, one yeah. broken arm yeah. roller skating almost every year. It, uh, it can happen anywhere. Yeah. Hudson's tooth went out in our basement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Non-ice related, just a hockey stick. There you go. Yeah. Um, all right, park rules. Um, we are going through in the process, just update the board. We're in the process, and Roger's been involved in this, and I appreciate Roger's help. Uh, and we've, we've had some mayor meetings with the mayor. Um, uh, on park rules from chapter 1062 of codified ordinances, which talked about like hours of, you know, that parks are open and, you know, uh, regulations on no smoking in the park and different things associated with park rules that are, are governed at the council level. Um, the last time they were really done, I actually, frankly, I think they were, the 1062 was done in 1971. So there are a lot of outdated uh, rules in there, some of which that are arguably not in line with the constitution uh you know frankly firearms is one of the things that's you know prohibited which is of, of recently has been told is not allowed to be prohibited so there's a lot of cleanup that needs to happen within that we are working with uh city attorney to do some cleanup there as well um so that's a process i'll bring in front of the board maybe in the next meeting what is what is the draft that will presumably go in front of um City Council uh, for an amendment to 1062. We have also had discussion, which I don't have necessarily on here, but uh, I know uh, we continue to talk with the mayor about 260, 262. <clears throat> That's the chapter that establishes the uh, recreation board and, and updating some of the language in there. There's some, there's some things in there that are required that isn't necessarily the way we actually, it, it's not in line with how we've operated for since I've been here. So some of that is a little bit outdated that uh, there may be some sort of adjustments to that as well. So I'll, I'll try to keep the board in the loop on that. Uh, if Two, when any 282. Legislation, 282, thank you. If when any legislation comes in front of uh, uh, council. Any questions on that? All right. Um, park signage. So this is in the Google Docs. Feel free to look at it at your leisure. You guys all have access to this, but I wanted to update the board on efforts. We are uh, working with the administration on improving park signage. And this is focused specifically at Jeffrey Park and Schneider Park and creating a unifying park signage plan uh, for our those two major parks. Uh, there may be some trickle in the Commonwealth, but that's not been the focus. There's not a lot of signage that is at Commonwealth, um, but what this will do is this will set a palette for what uh, the designs for our signage look like. So it could very easily migrate into other parts, whether that's Commonwealth or Havenwood down the line. Um, this is not a, by any means, a finalized sort of plan, but it, it identifies potential locations. Uh, now that you scroll down, um, th those are different locations of different types of signage. You, you will cross-reference the type of sign versus as you scroll down the, the different sort of, uh, uh, designs. Um, these are types of signs that would be entry point signs, uh, like at the Clifton entrance, potentially at the uh, pool entrance out uh, on Clifton, uh, at the entrance at um, Charles at Schneider Park and at Astor Schneider Park that identify the park, may identify the entrance. At Jeffrey Park, 
Uh, people go there for lots of different reasons, not necessarily just to go to mm-hmm. Jeffrey Mansion. It might be to go to the pickleball courts. It might be to go to a sh- uh, family reunion at a shelter. Uh, and so uh, those those access points will have different sort of entry names um, so that when somebody calls, how do I get here? We say, use this entry point, uh, which will help with ways finding. Uh, if you don't mind scrolling down. Um, this is the general sort of design um, uh, which is these posts with signs hanging off it for signs that may uh, live inside the park. Uh, some of that will have maps and give you the trail maps and uh, different points of interest within the park, the shelters, the restrooms, pickleball courts, the pools. Uh, some of it is identifying signs. Um, so this is, uh, you know, nothing has, you know, nothing has been finalized. I will say. The aesthetic of the sign is something that we're looking to get a mock-up done of, um, uh, and you know, purchase one to be built and see how we feel about, uh, you know, those. As you can imagine, there's a lot of different little minor minor details that go into these signs. Whether the lettering is raised, whether it's etched, whether it's a laminate, whether, you know. So there's a lot of different things that you're not going to be able to necessarily pick up on this. Um, if the board has an interest, I'd be happy to invite uh, Dave. Uh, Ben Goodman is the designer who's working on uh, helping us do this project. Um, if, you know, if there's a feeling that you know the board members want to talk specifics about the aesthetic of the sign, then we're more than happy to have him come. Uh, I wanted you guys to have access to this so you can start to sort of see about potential locations. I don't expect, as you look at the map, there's a lot of different reasons, have a lot of different sides, a lot of different places. Uh, they're not inexpensive. I don't expect that we would sort of maybe uh, uh, install all of those right away at one time. We would probably prioritize um, signs that we think are most important and sort of work work forward from there. Uh, and we we part of the discussion has really been about how we want to incorporate the no dogs at Jeffrey Park. I was, I was going to say um, I was going to recommend. It. It, it, I don't know. We all need to be involved in everything about the aesthetics, but if we could involve Barb, yeah, Barb in this and kind of understand the rules writing of the rules of the park process yeah um the language yeah she's 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 talked about this for a long time as you know about about mm-hmm. trying to have uniform rule signage in, including no dogs and you have to wish that the no dogs be prominent I, I, highlighted or yeah whatever. i think what um, the no dogs is going to be is a can you go to one of the signs with the poles if you would when well, did i pass it your word scroll Why up mostly new or the most of the places like this yeah right there, that's right um, there are there, a lot of them are new. There's the hodgepodge of signage. There's there's a hodgepodge of signage, and yeah, some are temporary, some are old, permanent, some are like an example of one that was. You know, we have a signage that identifies the Kaufman Tennis Courts, which is to the if you face the tennis courts to the left. Uh, we also have a sign that identifies the um, Solomon Pickleball Courts. Um, we have signage on one of the shelters that identifies as the memorial shelter. There's some different signage for the shelters. Okay. But if you look at this and if you look at the one that says identify trail on the right side, you see a little outline of a placard up at the top, a little circle on the right yes. side. That would potentially be where a picture of a dog with a circle and, you know, it says, so it, it sticks out separate from just the overall rules. Yeah. Um, because we know that that's a hot <coughs> to communicate to our visitors. Um, so, you know, there's still a, a lot of work to do on this, um, but we have spent a decent amount of time in terms of meeting and trying to figure out where signs are. It's hard. There's a lot of information you want to communicate. You also don't want to overdo signage in a park from an aesthetic. Uh, so finding that balance is not always easy. I, I do think there's the potential, although I know the, the mayor would probably would not like to hear this, but some of this is somewhat seasonal. Like we have issues with owls when they're in mating season, for example. Um, yeah, which isn't probably something we can capture in a permanent sign. It might still have to be somewhat, you know, like temporary. Like no owls allowed? Or- <laughs> yes, no owls. We've had some, yes, yes, we have, we have, we have Yes, we have times so that's allowed to happen. Okay. Yes. Like how? Yeah. 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 I just wonder what that sign would look like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that could be a logo sign too, maybe. I mean, she's just got some good ideas about how to do it briefly. She also yeah. has ideas about you know, just working yeah. and stuff now going on. 
that. Yes, we've had conversations about that. Yeah. I, okay, so yeah. you've heard from me. Yeah, we've had, we actually had a good conversation a couple weeks ago okay. about the foraging. So I just think there, she so. had that information too. Yeah. Into, into that. That's yeah. all I'm um, speaking of speaking of birds of prey, <laughs> um, uh, just I, I had to pass along when we were working on the ice and getting it prepared. We had uh, an, a really cool bald eagle sighting that was right flying right down the creek, being chased by a huge hawk. Oh wow! Who was trying to chase this bald eagle off? Uh, and, and so the bald eagle, we've had a couple sightings. So while we were down there, it was really pretty cool. Um, anyway, side note: uh, we also have rules about bald eagles. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. About the size uh, of sticks they're used. Okay. Nice. Or it's for. Yeah. Okay. Go for a hot so break. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so anyway, um, in terms of the shelters, there's the, the idea is to have some lettering. You can kind of see it on the top edge of the uh, of the roof line, which is a little bit different. Um, and so that would identify the shelters. It's not really great identifying. We know how we what we call them, but for the general public, it's not. It's not. Yeah. So, I want to update on that. Obviously, you know, not to take up too much time. Feel free to go through this if questions come up or thoughts uh, or ideas. Uh, you know, reach out to me either individually or at the next record meeting. I do have another question. Yeah. So, if this is like, no, he didn't. Okay. So, what happens if you do decide to do seasonal signs? For instance. The owl issue is they they, they attack. Yeah, sure. And that when they act when they have their baby their owlets when they have their babies and a couple people you know mm -hmm. have, have been attacked and uh, and it, I've almost been attacked. Catherine was almost attacked once. So Barb was suggesting maybe doing seasonal signs because mm -hmm. you know you don't have to be aware of that all the time. So would this kind of um, um, uniform signage mm -hmm. and trophies and mm -hmm. those kind of mm -hmm. seasonal protection mm -hmm. signs that the staff at their discretion could put out. Um, that's no, no, I mean, I nothing would necessarily prohibit that. Okay. I, I know, I know from an aesthetic standpoint, there's a lot of concern about having all these sort of um, temporary signs that get thrown up, but there's obviously on the flip side, there's some communication that needs to go out from a safety perspective or from a uh, protection of the park perspective. Uh, I will say some of these signs, if you scroll down, are designed to have inserts uh, that could allow us to communicate different seasonal information. Um, let's see, there's that, that, that being one That's of them. Um, now, I, I say that, but there, there aren't going to be a lot of those, and they're probably not all going to be in the right spot for, like, for example, the issue we had with owls that were in a specific area that were swooping down during mating season. That sign maybe it lives at the shelter house, and that maybe isn't necessarily where that information is most important to provide. Uh, where we might want to have it by the area that we're having issue with the owl. Um, or the trail close. Yeah, or the trail close to it. So, yeah. so there, there's the potential to have seasonal information within this. It might not serve all of our purpose in terms of the importance of that communication in, in certain situations. I do think. Uh, again, not to speak to the mayor, I do think he wants us to get away from the temporary dog signs. It's one thing when you have a seasonal situation like the owls or if foraging is somewhat seasonal and you want to address something like that at a seasonal. It's another thing to temporarily address what is a permanent rule about no dogs and that should be done in a more permanent solution. So, but yeah, I hear your point. All right, any other questions on that? All right, um, uh, the winter spring activity brochure went out. Hopefully everyone got one, but if you didn't, you can have some here. That's a new Oh, there they are. Uh, so if anyone didn't get one, please take one. Uh, uh, big thank you to our recreational staff for all of their work on developing the programming. Uh, Natalie, for those that don't know, Natalie is uh, the one that actually makes all of this work. She creates it, she organizes it, she organizes the staff and how that they do their write-ups and then she puts it into this brochure and she makes it look really nice as well. So thank you, Natalie, for all of your amazing work on this brochure. Um, it went out, yeah, it is, it's amazing. It's, it is. Did you do the music video for skating last year too? Were you behind that? Oh no, that was an Emily Perfect. Emily Perfect production. She's <laughs> awesome. Emily Weller. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, and so uh, <laughs> if you had a chance, but our registration open, today at noon, yeah. as some of you had mentioned. Um, we did, uh, as of three o'clock today, we had done uh, 1,200, I'm sorry, 
1,441 registrations, $97,000 in revenue in three hours. Mm -hmm. um, last winter spring, so 2022, uh, on the same day that, that registration yeah. opened okay. for that full yeah. day, we had done 1,200, 1,215 registrations and 81,000. So we've had a That's pretty good uptick from, uh, from that. I think there's, you know, we're still con continuing to see sort of us coming out of COVID and people getting more engaged in, in programming that we've seen in the last two years. And so I'm sort of not surprised from that perspective that we can use that uptick, but um, check it out, spread the word. Um, Non-resident uh, registration opens uh, Friday. Friday at noon. Uh, Friday at noon. So um, we'll keep an eye on that. As you talk with people, as is always the case, we have a lot of wait lists and a lot of different programs. We are now going through the process, our, our uh, programmers are now going through the process of looking at those that have high wait lists and finding out what our options are for getting people in, whether it's expanding a program uh, to allow more people in, in terms of the number, uh, the max number. We hesitate to do that because we wanna make sure we protect the quality of the program. Um, so we don't want to take a program that really works well at 20 and put 40 in it because it just gets more people in if it, if it ultimately impacts the quality. But we, we do look at, uh, you know, whether there's two or three more people we can fit in there if there's only a couple people on the wait list. We also look at programs that there's just a huge demand. Can we add more classes, more sessions? Mm -hmm. And we have to work with our instructors. In most cases, it's instructor-based uh, as to whether they can, um, whether they're available for what X, Y, or Z date, or they can add another time. Uh, but we will go through that process with the goal of getting as many people in as we possibly can service. Um, and that's the process we're going through now. That'll be what we're doing the next couple of weeks. So as you hear from people, I know it's frustrating. It's frustrating to get on there and get waitlisted, um, especially when you get on there at 12.01 and it's already in the waitlist. Uh, we're blessed to have a lot of interest and a lot of demand and a lot of great instructors and a lot of great programming. Uh, we're not blessed with unlimited resources and spaces and, you know, whether it's gyms, you know, our Nerf program, I think at the max of 20, we have a Nerf, a Nerf game program that we do on Saturday mornings, and we had at least 20 on the wait list. Uh, we only have so many gyms that we have access to and so much time in there, and so we'll do what we can, but there's some limiting, limiting factors we have to work through. Mike, quick yeah. question on that. What um, are the programs that we just anticipated had today that were heavy wait listed? So typically our Coach Chris programs are heavy wait lists. Mm -hmm. Our dance programs can get into a heavy wait list, although I, I don't remember if, do you yeah. know what we had? Well, we, had, we do pre-registration mm -hmm. for, from fall. So they were limited spots already, um, but I, have, I haven't looked at those numbers. I'm assuming that they're gonna be yeah. wait listed a little bit. Um, Nerf is? Nerf was, um, I think some of our, I think some of our flag, flag football actually has filled up, I think, in rookies, which is so kind of un it's yeah. kind of unheard of for a youth sport, a league sport to get filled this quickly, I think. Usually it's not like in the first day. It's usually over a few weeks. First rookies first and second grade. Yep. Yep. I think um veterans was was up there too. But yeah, it's mainly the oh, oh tennis. Boy. Tennis is probably tennis got is one. Very, yes. Yeah. And right now we're in the indoor season, so we have very limited access. Yeah. It's like one gym one court at a time so we can't we can't do a lot we can't make a lot of adjustments to that as we can with the outdoor tennis i think chess filled up at with yeah. 30 max and they still have on the wait list so okay. which is great um, art class, class. Art class yeah. which is I awesome sign up twice what I are you free to spot up <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah in terms of our youth sports flag football has the most sort of limiting factors on it because we have uh, we can only do it on Sundays in terms of having access to the yeah. field, and we only have a limited number of hours we can be there, and so we can only handle so many teams. Do we have? Do we on that? We take residents first, and then Friday will be open to non-residents with yeah. flag. Mm -hmm. Okay, because mm -hmm. we've that program started bringing in a lot of non-residents yeah. more than yeah. the past years. Yeah, yeah, okay. um, which is a great. Yeah, thing. Our residents yeah. have our residents on that have first access. Um, the other thing I, sh I should mention is our uh, preschool registration opens up um, uh, next Tuesday. Excuse me, next Tuesday. For so returning next families have, have had an open yeah. enrollment since last late last year. Mm -hmm. uh, new families enrollment, resident enrollment starts resident. next Tuesday. Non-resident starts is the, the Tuesday, Tuesday after, after that. Yep. Um, is it and strictly uh, phone or is it uh, online? It's, it's online. The whole okay. 
-hmm. Now, they usually reach out to Kate Swindle, our, our program director, and do a visit and you know talk with her about the program and learn about the program. Yeah, but in terms I, of the registration, it's all I wonder if I called it. Yeah. Um, and early indication is we have a great number of returning families. So we have mm -hmm. limited open spots, frankly, with preschool. And just so everyone's aware, our process with that is returning families is anyone that's had a kid, not just in the program currently, but has had the kid in the program mm -hmm. in years past because we want to have that continuity for those families. So if you have a kid that was there four years ago and you have another kid that's now a preschool age that you have access to returning families to the extent that we have space. Do you have grandchildren too? Like if you were in it and you have a child. <laughs> that's a good question. That's yeah. a good okay. question. We'll have to see, we'll have to see. Right. we might have to address that. <laughs> uh, speaking of the uh, um, activity brochure, what you will not find in this activity brochure is our full oh, membership yeah. information. Um, uh, council did approve a budget uh, that reflects a $50 membership uh, for the per pool. your recommendation. No, oh, your, your no, all your. Claire, your. Claire, 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 Claire membership. Claire, <laughs> Claire membership <rate>. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. Um, uh, so uh, we're going to move yeah. forward with that. Um, we're going to move forward with that. Uh, and we haven't started promoting that. We're, no. Natalie's working on sort of the plan for getting that out there. Uh, we'll obviously send it out to previous members and get in the uh, registration system set up to receive people through that. Um, we will have a non-resident rate. We'll have a limit on the non-resident non number of non-residents that we sell. Per person. Per person, okay. for residents. Mm -hmm. uh, I, that you'll have varying saving levels depending mm -hmm. on what right. you were previously, whether you're a family. Of, if you're the bigger your family was last year, the less of a savings it'll be. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, because you know, family of six, um, you know, it becomes a it, from family of four to family of six, it's like twenty bucks to add another person. Oh, no. um, Does anybody have to pay more? No. No. Okay, good. That's fine. No one has to pay more. Every, everyone has to pay less. I don't. I want to say it's two eight, like two eighties. Yeah, and I know I. I was like, <laughs> the only one. Yeah. The only one that theoretically could have to pay more is like, well, uh, if my mom was buying this back when I was a kid. Right. A family of not a family of seven, family of nine. A yeah. family of nine would be paying more. Yeah. Uh, because it was six plus. Anything over six paid the same amount yeah. as six. Yeah. 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 Uh, so theoretically, I guess there could be a family that is a family of eight that is maybe paying more. Uh, and I guess we could take that on a case by case basis. Yeah. If we like. And we are having. It, it was two, it was one and under is free. It will be under one is free. So a one year old will have to pay a $50 yeah. membership. Yeah. Um, we and then we're doing have, pl yeah. plus That's ones. Right. We're also doing plus ones uh, for $100. So you, so you can still have a plus one for babysitter, for grandma, for any guest, basically. It's basically a guest pass, right? But you're paying $100 and that can just, that can go towards. So you're still, even with that, just being $100, that's actually less than it was before too. It was 123, I think. So that just a reminder, that's a transferable pass. So we're, it's more expensive than a $50 one that is specific to an individual. Yeah. That would, the, the plus one allows you to use it for grandma who's coming with yeah. the kids. And then for babysitter that's coming with the kids, obviously one person at a time. But, but they have to come with, a member of yes. that family. Yeah. Any questions on that? So have you guys finalized the contract with Swim Safe or where you we go? have. Mm -hmm. Yep. We finalized the contract with Swim Safe. We are in the process of setting up regular um, uh, meetings going into it. Um, uh, Natalie, why don't you talk a little bit about the, their initial response on staffing levels? Yeah, they re they reached out um, very quickly after kind of that December meeting and uh, they had had some kids, they had a, a low response at first, but then once they could confirm what the rate was going to be with at the $15 per hour, um, they were able to get, I think they had 12 responses. Two of them were not coming back for various reasons um, as it relates to schooling or one of them might've been, they might've been able to get paid a little bit higher somewhere else. Um, but then they've had at least nine confirmed lifeguards returning. Um, their goal is to get uh they're, they're going to reach back out to those that had said they are not coming back or had not heard from. They're going to reach out again saying that, hey, this, this is where we are. It's $15 an hour plus whatever bumps they would get if they were returning staff. Um, so I think that's we're in a much better place than we were last year at this time. Um, and then they're still obviously open. You know, we're, we're hi they're hiring so they can go to BexleyRec.com. I'm sorry. 
bexley.org slash rec jobs, where all of our summer employment is, there is something there for the pool as well. And it takes them directly to their website. So that's been open since December 1st. Um, but yeah, they're, you know, they're hoping that they can get up into, I think, 30 to 40 lifeguards is where they would like to be at. So will the management people be the same as they indicated they're coming back? Uh, yes, I, they've confirmed that Elise is going to come back, uh, which is great. Okay. Um, so we were, I'm, I was happy to happy to hear that. Um, I think she did a great job last year, and she was young, but you know, I think she uh, she had got some experience last year, and I think she'll be a, a good returner. And she had, like like we said before, she's she works at before and after care. Um, she's mm -hmm. she grew up in Bexley, so she's very connected to the community, which is which is great. We are we are working on scheduling regular meetings now at this point until the start of this this uh, pool season with swim safe just to stay in the loop with how things are going with staffing and also continue to work through some of the other sort of improvements we want to see occur but we're going to have uh early on we'll have probably in january just one meeting and then start having maybe a couple times a month moving forward so that we're really on top of some of the other sort of areas of, yeah. of improvement we want to see can we add in your report for tuesday night's council meeting that um, you've retained the prior pool management. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think that would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then on um, the back of the brochure, which yeah. I love this yeah. little excerpt. Yeah. Can we, where it says Bexley Recreation Job Opportunities, mm -hmm. can we get that on Park and Rec's, um, get that out on social media so we can share that? Yes, we've been, yeah, we had a post, it's Maybe probably, it's, well, it's been, it's probably been a few weeks, so okay. it is something that we should, we should do again with it being the new year. I think we did it right when we opened things up around December 1st, um, but yes, we will definitely do that. And speaking of that back page, I meant to, I meant to point this out, our, our, uh, the Bexley Community Foundation's Texas Hold'em fundraiser. <laughs> yes. uh, if anyone is interested in, in Joy's Poker and for good cause, um, uh, what is the date again, Natalie? Why is it? Uh, 27th, January 27th. January 27th. January um, 27th. It'll be, it's, it's being run by the Community Foundation, but we are assisting them. And it's happening at uh, Jeffrey Mansion in the new space. Um, so if you're interested, uh, sign up. You sign up through the Community Foundation. Um, but it is, a, it is a lot of fun. Sponsored by uh, Jimmy John's. We provide mm -hmm. free uh, subs for all the participants prior to the event. And um, Okay, good time. So spread the word. Anything else in here? That's all. Any old business? New business? Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Okay. We're Appreciate have a great it. New year. Yeah. What time does Ohio play on Monday? Oh, that's right. <laughs> mm. Too soon. <laughs> uh. That was that was rough. That was heartbreaking. <laughs>